This is Jason from Ishibashi Music Shibuya in Tokyo and as promised, welcome to the first video on the opening day of NAMM 2017. I am at the Ibanez booth, just as I promised I would be. So let's go and have a look around at the new models this year. Now I know Ibanez are making a really big push on their premium line and they have definitely stepped up the game. Now these guitars look fantastic. If they would have put the Ibanez Edge Pro and Low Pro on this guitar, Oh, sorry, the Ibanez Edge rather, and the Ibanez Edge Low Pro on these guitars, I think people would have gone nuts for them because they look beautiful. The necks are gorgeous. Look at those multi-laminates, they're beautiful. Everything about these guitars is great. The only thing I'm not a big fan of is the bridge. But not everybody wants to spend the sort of money you've got to spend for a Japanese guitar. These are beautiful looking instruments. The necks feel really good, like they do feel correct profile. Actually, the back is a little bit flatter than I expected, which is interesting. Yeah, it does have a little bit of a flat spot there, in a way. It's a, actually, it is a different feel, sorry. I should have felt it before I said that, pick, uh, before picking it up. All right, move around here. This here, there is not a 550 anniversary model as I thought there would be an RG550, there's not. This is what they're doing. This is the RG30, I saw this on the web yesterday or the day before. Um, this is a tribute to the RG series. I guess you could say like a 550 to some degree. That's a big, thick, beautiful top on there. Natural guitars are all the rage these days and what people love. The neck looks great. Wow, the back plate looks cool. And that's really nice, the 30th anniversary. This is not a cheap guitar at all, but this is a J Custom. This is a very, very high level, prestigious instrument. Beautiful looking instrument. So there's your 30th anniversary of the RG right there. Um, the Uppercut series, all very nice. And I know a lot of people are whinging about the prices on the Ibanez guitars, but you know what? Everything is getting more expensive these days. Manufacture and all sorts of stuff's getting more expensive. The cost of living in the world is getting more expensive, hence the prices of guitars are getting more expensive too. That's just the way it is. That's a cool looking guitar. It's nice to see an RGA return as an RGA. Uh, this by the price point is obviously not a Japanese instrument. It's got locking tuners, it's Indonesian. Good neck. Neck feels right. Huh, that's cool and it's a nice colour too. My dear friend Kiko, who I spoke to uh, last night, just quickly on messages, he's unfortunately not making it to the show, uh, but he's got a new colour out too. That's cool. Oh, and Nina, I spoke to Kiko last night for you and he's going to do the guitar for you when he comes to Japan in May. Don't say I don't look after you, mate. Uh, we have another Kiko model here. Um, an entry level Kiko model, well, that's interesting, I didn't know about that. Kiko has become so popular these days that it makes perfect sense to have something like that for people who want to be able to get a Kiko instrument but can't afford a bigger price tag. Jay Boehm from Periphery Models, seven string and six string model guitars. Um, interesting that they go Japanese for the six string and Indonesian for the seven string. I don't really know the reasoning behind that, but I wish they would make a seven string Japanese with the reverse headstock, the two pickups and all. On this side here, uh, Bob Weir. Koi Bowles, I'm sorry, I don't know who that is. Noodles, I would say he's possibly a country artist, I don't know. Oh, he's from the Zach Brown Band, of course he is. Oh, silly me. Uh, Chris Miller model, Andy Timmons models, I don't think there's anything new there, but still looking nice. Um, Sam Topman, the last year colour release for the new Herman Lee from last year colour. Now, in the reverse headstock, one of my favourite dudes who I'm still yet to meet, Dino. I think Dino's awesome, he's just got so much heart and soul in life in general, not just as a guitar player, but he just seems like such a good dude. I've got one of his guitars in my store, which is actually a signed guitar, so the back plate on it's signed, as is this one here, there we go. Um, he's, his guitar, unfortunately, hasn't seemed to be as popular as what it should have been. Uh, my personal feeling is that if they had to put a single coil size pickup there and a simple switch, it probably would have sold more because it would have been more versatile. But Dino's awesome. Please support him. If you're a fan of Fear Factory, get out and buy physical copies because buying digital copies doesn't support artists, unfortunately. Now there's something very interesting, an eight string with a whole new shape on it. Look at that. The guys from Meshuggah are definitely coming up with some interesting stuff. So there's a good, nice look at that guitar. Serious piece of work. Let's have a look at the back of the neck. 
There you go, guys. That's incredible. It's an Indonesian made guitar too, so it helps you to get something in an eight string that's cool like that without having to pay an $8,000 price tag. Now, Monkey still being with Ibanez, unfortunately, Head has gone across to ESP. I say unfortunate because Ibanez fans are quite shocked by it, but you know what, I'm sure he's got his reasons. The U-Bar is back, which is very cool. Now, let's get across around the corner here because I'm pretty sure if I go around this way, that we're gonna find the guitar that many of you are dying to see, the Steve Vai model. Oh, there it is. Let's get over here is the 30th anniversary gems, live in the flesh. Look at those sexy, sexy beasts. I will say that color is actually pretty damn close to the original. It's a better color than what they got out on the anniversary, 25th anniversary of the RG550. Uh, was it 20th? Oh, sorry, 20th anniversary, sorry. The color still does look a little bit different to recollection from the originals. I've got an original myself. Um, but it's hard to say because the color on them has changed a bit over the years. So getting an exact memory of what it was originally is very hard to say, but I would hedge a bet that that's a pretty accurate color. I'm sure Ibanez did their research on it. Um, the pink, shocking pink looks absolutely gorgeous. I know that's gonna be the one that most people are gonna want because it's the hardest one to find now in the, in the used market. And your Loch Ness Green looking stunning as always. Now the back of these instruments, which is something that in the photos that leaked, the back of the guitars was not something that I saw shown. So here's what we've got to deal with on this one. Serial numbers, five piece laminate neck, which is for strength. The heel being there is a smart idea because obviously saving cracks, we all know that as Ibanez fans. There's your anniversary backplate. So gem 30th anniversary, 1987 to 2017, uh, made in Japan. Very cool. And there's a trim stopper in the back too. I'm sure that can be adjusted. They are mighty fine looking instruments, they really are. And the neck, oh my God, that neck just feels glorious. Yep, for those of you who are debating as to whether you're gonna buy one or not, there's been a few crybabies whinging about the price of the guitar because their street price in America is three and a half thousand dollars. Honestly, for a reissue guitar like that, and that is such a staple guitar in the industry, you go and buy a reissue Gibson, you're gonna be paying $10,000 for, uh, for an R9 or an R8. Three and a half thousand dollars for that, considering brand new, I think they were roughly, or at least I know in Australia, they were about $3,000 when they came out Australian. Um, that's a good price, that's a good instrument. I don't see what you're all crying about. That's a freaking cool guitar right there. Joe Satriani, we have a new pickup. Joe has a sustainer system in his guitar. Wow, that's cool, it's a three-way switch down there. Uh, Sustainiac, wow, I didn't even know that was coming out. So there we go. We still have the push-pull pots, yes we do. That's mighty cool. Nice, big, thick um, laminate there. Active, obviously, in the back for the sustainer. This is muscle car red, this color. Joe, well done, that's awesome. Uh, Joe's actually gonna be in Japan, I just found out the other day, on the 8th of February for a show, so I don't know that I'll get an interview with Joe. I'll ask some people, but I doubt it'll happen, but I will try. Uh, muscle car black, muscle car purple, and then the uh, Indonesian model and on Joe's guitar on the Indonesian and on Steve's as well they've been willing to put the Ibanez edge which is a cool thing. The neck is quite chunky on here and does feel like a different profile. It is slightly different. Uh, so there's Joe's guitars for this year. Now the new Tosinobusi prototype. So as you can see it's gloss on the side, it's a matte finish on the inside there. Um, I'm not really sure what else to tell you about this because you guys have all been watching the videos, I would say, of Tosin talking about this guitar himself. So there's nothing I can tell you that he hasn't told you himself. There's a look at the neck profile. It's very, very different. Different to a Strandberg, different to any other Ibanez I've ever seen before. That's a very interesting instrument. I don't really know what else to say about it. It's interesting. Paul Stanley guitars now, left-handed. I've been asked by the guys on the left, on the Ibanez lefties page to not disclude them. So here you go. 
There is a Paul Stanley left-handed model available this year. Uh, by the price tag, it would obviously have to be Indonesian. Let's just double check and confirm that. Uh, made in China, okay. But at least it's there. So when you all get out on the forums and you start crying and complaining about this and that, and look, I'm not trying to say you're a bunch of whiny bitches, but to some degree, you are a bunch of whiny bitches. Just take what you can get. And it's not just the lefties, it's the righties, it's everybody. The internet is great because you get to see things like this, but it's terrible because it just gives people to, a forum to complain. If you're gonna get up there and whinge about something, and even on this video, don't bother wasting anybody's time because all you're trying to do is get a little bit of attention. Look, it's probably not up to me to say it, but seriously, I'm sick to death of seeing people complaining about things when they should be happy and celebrating that something's at least out there and someone's listening. And if you don't get what you want, start your own company and do it yourself. So, left-handed Paul Stanley. There it is right there. It is available for the first time that I've ever seen one. Paul Gilbert, the man, the legend. He is probably Japan's most popular and favorite guitar player. Uh, a Paul Gilbert mini guitar, that's super, super cool. Uh, it is an Ibanez Micro in a Paul Gilbert guitar. Sensational, well done, Paul. If you ever see this, Paul, champion effort, mate. I think that's great. Now, RG Prestige Series. There is some very cool looking stuff here in this range, so let's get into it. Let's start for the lefties. So, there is an RG. 652 available now in left hand. There's your complete code when you want to look it up. Very nice. This whole series is really cool. Uh, a right hander in antique white blonde with a natural back on it, as is the lefty. We've got a fixed bridge here on an RG752. Once again, there's your code. And this guitar, excuse me, uh, this guitar here, uh, Galaxy White, hang on, that's a white, and it's also available in Galaxy White. Okay, so there's two colors available. Uh, again, 652 in a different color again. This is called Anvil Gray Burst. This here is an RG655. So this is essentially is your RG550 with the current series name. Uh, it's got Damasio pickups in it. That there is your closest thing to your RG550. So there you go. There are others of similarity, but with the pick guard, that's a pretty good tip of the hat. Uh, the Poplar, uh, the Poplar Bell top has been released there. Did I get that name right? I think I did. Has been released there in a uh, blue color as the eight string had been. And there's a new color. This one here is called Anvil Gray Burst Flat. Still textured on there. This is beautiful. This is Sunset Burst. Beautiful looking top on there. I don't quite know what to call that top. It's certainly not a top that I know as a name off the top of my head. Mahogany body. Lovely. Very nice indeed. We have Iron Label series here. New color this year. Very nice. I'm going to speed through a little bit more if possibly. That is a killer looking top. Look at that. Huh. <laughs> Bare knuckle pickups by the looks of things. Uh, that's called an RGA IX7 UABS, and then the same thing but with a six instead of a seven. Very nice. Gorgeous looking top on a transparent white. Uh, it's called White Frost Flat. So now across the hollow body guitars, we have a beautiful looking red transparent instrument here. This is called an AFC 151 SRR. That is a beautiful looking instrument, look at that. So for you guys out there who want to play jazz but don't want to pay big, big price tags, I will say the Ibanez range that's been made in hollow body stuff, even being out of China and that doesn't state where it's made, no serial number, maybe it's a prototype, I don't know. The stuff they're even making in China, they're doing a great job in that factory. I'm not sure if that's Indonesian or Chinese, I would say it's Chinese as they had been. There's a blue color as well, which has got a uh, twin pickup system on it as there is a flat black there as well, or black flat they're calling it. They make beautiful instruments, and for the price, you cannot get better, as far as I'm concerned. The Pat Metheny models, an absolute legend in the industry. And then George Benson models here. George Benson has a GB40th right here. I didn't even know this was coming. So that's a beautiful natural flame maple on there. Gorgeous looking inlays. That's a stunner. It really is. All right, and then some more George Benson models over here. This is 
uh, a nod to history, I would say, being it's uh, 40th anniversary of George with Ibanez. And there are affordable models there. They're limited edition on this particular one here. Nice look there. So now in the RG series, there is a whole bunch of new stuff here. Very cool looking new color. These are affordable versions of your RG series that we saw just before in the Prestige. Uh, beautiful flat, uh, flat finished matte style tops here. Nice range of colors. Neck through body here, neck through body here. That's what those two are. Iron Label series, there's a lot of good looking new stuff out this year. Uh, I think these were released a short time ago, so it's nice to see reverse headstocks on Ibanez because I know a lot of Ibanez fans are big lovers of that, especially on a seven string with a reverse headstock. It's a lovely, lovely thing. And of course, as we all know, we'd wish they would do it out of Japan. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Gentleman's just letting me through. That's a cool looking seven string. It's nice that they actually finally released this model in a new color. The RGIM with the fan frets definitely needed a new color at last. And there's a black as well. There is also an eight string in black with EMG pickups, as they always are. Thank you. Excuse me. And then the last two here, sorry mate. Last two here, uh, looking very nice actually. Beautiful trim, Gibson Custom-esque, very cool. Artcore Vintage range, I'm sure you guys have all been watching these on the net, they've been out for a while. I'm sure there are some new colors and things, but I'm not too familiar with them. Uh, I do quite like the Talman series. Sparkle Red does look very nice in real life. I'd seen pictures, it was the first time I've seen the real thing. And the Sparkle Blue looks quite nice too. So there we go, folks. There's the 2017 lineup of the Ibanez guitars here at the NAMM show. I will try and get to doing the bases later, but I want to go and sit down, edit, get this video out for you all to enjoy. So thanks for watching. Rock on, Jason Ishibashi Music Tokyo.